Happy Saturday, everyone, and I am back for another just incredible Saturday morning with the community. You guys are just awesome, and I've really been enjoying doing my um, 365 journal with, with my YouTube community this year. This has been a lot of fun, actually more fun than what I thought, because I thought, like, you know, I, a lot of times when I'm teaching stuff, it's hard for me to just to kind of get in it and enjoy it you know what i mean because i'm so focused on okay the teaching part of it but i'm really enjoying this journey with everyone and i'm glad to see that you guys based on your comments and stuff are having a good time with it as well so this week's prompt is going to be a lot of fun and we're going to have even more fun when we jump into it so this one is week 16 it's the art of burrow so B-O-R-O, -O, which is the word for the Japanese small stitching. Um, it's normally a mending stitch. It's been used to stitch garments together, but it's such a beautiful pattern that's created over time of the garments wearing through and taking small pieces of indigo fabrics and stuff. Um, you know, it was used uh, by a lot of um, the working class who just couldn't afford new dunk garments and stuff like that and they just continued to mend the ones they had but it's beautiful art and so a stitch in time saves nine I always think about that because my grandmother used to say that and when I think about burrow stitching it just reminds me of that quote and I know we've all heard that so um, as a young girl growing up, I heard my mother and other family matriarchs repeat this as if it were a mantra. It means that a timely repair of a hole or tear in a garment will save more work or the possible loss of that item in the long run. I didn't grow up in a culture of consumption. We were taught to take care of our environment and preserve what we owned. I think it's because of those early values that this saying has hung in with me into adulthood. What is remarkable is that my mother and my grandmother as well has shared stories of giving me a threaded needle and a piece of cloth and how I would stay entertained for long periods of time making stitches on the cloth. And in fact, I was so young that I have no memory of this, yet the connection to threads, lengths of fabric are a part of my visual vocabulary. And moving forward, I do remember um, as I got older, you know, working on pieces of fabric. My mother used to sew a lot, her own personal wardrobe. And I just remember sitting there with little pieces of fabric, figuring out how I could stitch together a little skirt or something as I got older. So years ago, I discovered the centuries-old art of burrow. I immediately connected with the kindred spirit in this art form and have used the stitch and wrapping of bundles as a prominent visual element in my imaging of my story ever since. The concepts of repair and restoration are a part of the fundamentals of my language as an archaeomythologist and are responsible for my love for old walls, crumbling and torn things, and the thrill of the hunt. So I will put in, in the book, I have it uh, written out a brief history of the borough, but I'll also just put a link to maybe like a Wikipedia um, version that will you guys can look up and just read more on. I won't take the time to read all of that. But the borough is a Japanese um, borough are a class of Japanese textiles that have been mended or patched together. The term is derived from Japanese borough borough, meaning something tattered or repaired. So that's the basis of what it is, but I'll put the link, like I said, so that you can um, uh, be able to, to maybe just read more and look more up yourself. So, so this week's prompt is to think about those things that are tattered and, you know, how we maintain and, and even thinking a little bit about consumption and consumerism because, you know, we just are so more, you know, like if something even gets the slightest little hole in, oh, it's thrown out. It's so disposable, right? And uh, so it's the idea of thinking a little bit deeper during your journal time about um, these concepts, you know, the values that we place around that. And then also the idea of stitching and patching things together. Um, the technique with that, you know, we use that in collage. Maybe this week you'll explore maybe putting more stitches, working with the sewing machine or hand stitching in the work. But it's the idea of the burrow, which is one of my absolute favorite styles. And I have a, a patron who last year in the summer 
this past summer actually sent me some um, of her collection of old books and ephemera. She knows how much I love them. And she actually sent me a, a piece of burrow that was, it's a large piece actually. It, they also use them, um, um, they create um, mosquito nettings. And um, when those actually get holes in them, they actually would use the burrow stitching on those. And so she sent me a, a, a large one. And these things are hard to get your hands on. And when you do, they're so costly. But um, she had several of them in her collection. And she says, hey, you know, I'm not really using these. And so she gifted. I couldn't believe it. So, you know, I'm so grateful to my community. My patrons are awesome. You guys here on YouTube are just incredible community. And I just feel so blessed. So I know I'm getting a little mushy this morning, but <laughs> that's what's in my heart. So thank you guys. And let's jump down to the table. Okay, y'all. So we're going to go a little bit deeper down the journal, um, journaling rabbit hole. Uh, you can see by the look of my desk, I have Seth Apters some stamps here and we're going to be using these in a technique that I love to do in journaling and admittedly I haven't been doing it as much recently in my journaling but I've been inspired um, this year to just really create a journal in which a dedicated journal in which I'm working in this style of journaling so um, I thought that the journal that we start next month uh, I showed you last week, I believe, or the week before the journaling, um, the um, printables that I have already created for May. And they dovetail with April's printables, the ones we're using now. So all the images will work together, but all my printables work together. And printables you already have will all work together. But the May ones I have set up so that they're, they're fold. And so the pages are, when you print them out, they're basically already kind of ready to fold into a book structure that we'll, we'll have fun playing with. But I thought it'd be cool to incorporate this style of journaling where you can add your your visuals with your words. And generally what I do is I'm very much an avid um, writing. I have a lot of written journals. So like for instance, I'm just over here grabbing um, some, I have a, sorry about this. I didn't think to pull them out before I started the video, but anyhow, it's all good. So this is my current one. I started this one. Um, back in July, um, when I had gone to Mount Shasta, I'd got, gone to a conference there. I was actually one of the presenters. And so, I mean, I fill my book up with drawings, with lots of notes, writing. And this is the second half of the year, and I'm finishing that one now. And this right here is the one from the previous year. So you see, I have all kinds of sketches. Um, I have my scripting in there. And I basically journal daily or at least three or four times a week in my written journals and that's a lot of my ideas and stuff and then you've seen my um a lot of my other journals that are along this line even the junk journal that i showed you guys um that we've been patterning some of um the work that we're doing now in our journal out of so what I, and I have a tendency to always keep these these two type of journals going all the time. They're written and all of my visuals. And I have several visual journals going at the same time. So, um, like, I have a large, over on Patreon, we do a large journal. And this is the large journal that we've been doing for the year. So, um, yeah. Let me just get this out the way. So, I have you know, working with a large scale and, you know, working larger is so much different than working in a smaller format. So I'm uh, just flipping you guys. So you like seeing some of the flips. So we work in the larger scale and, you know, how do you flush those images out and what have you. So I have lots of different journals going at the same time because I think by now you can see that I also use my journals. I've got a lot of sun coming in here on the desk. Let me see if I can just... I don't want to create a glare like that. I'll just close that a little bit. Okay, cool. So, um, I and and all of these feed into my artwork that I'm doing in the studio. So they all work together. Um, so what I thought we would do today is we'll work on a technique where we will begin working with words in the journal. Now this this book is by 
Sabrina Ward Harrison. I came across her work like 25 years ago when she first created this book and I just loved her style of art and journaling. Like it immediately spoke to me. And um, just her quirky handwriting, um, you know, just using letters that you can get out of the, you know, out of the um, magazines. You might find words out of magazines that will spark something. And then um, you can go writing from there. But her work is just so compelling. I mean, look at this. These colors and everything so this was one of the first books I got from her the second one that she brought out was this one I believe that I'm getting this in the right order and uh, same thing just love this and so in my early days of really committing to journaling this was one of the styles that I really liked and it helped me integrate the idea of words and this was uh, she has several I think she it's even I, I think she has another one even um, in between this one that I don't have but you can just see she just her journals are just like yummy so um, I thought let's play around with this since we're going to go into doing um, working in an external creating an external book as art pieces that we're we've been talking about so we can spend time practicing in the journal and then also a lot of that will go into the book is art. And I think the idea of Burrow is so perfect for this technique because you can see the way she collages in writing. It is this idea of sort of like piecing things together, right? Um, and uh, a lot of our work up to this point has been, you know, that's what we're doing. We're just piecing and putting things together and, and expanding our ideas and what have you. So these are my pieces from last week that I did over in Patreon. So, yeah, loving it. So we're ready to go this week. So let's just get jump in. I wanted to kind of set the stage um, for what my ideas are here. And I'm going to show you a, a, a fun style of journaling on the pages that I use a lot when I travel too. Because I like to use this white ink pen. It's, um, it's a Signo Uniball in white and it writes over everything. All kind of paints acrylic everything so I, I travel with this and I'm gonna show you a little fun technique that I do with that and so we're gonna get started so let me put this to the side right now because what I want to do to get us going I know that sometimes I, a lot of times I hear that folks don't like their handwriting they don't feel like it's you know you can see her handwriting is, is really sloppy and you know just all over the place and um, so don't let that stop you. But there's a lot of ways that you can kind of introduce your handwriting into something that may be a little bit more structured. And that's what we're going to do today. So I have this. You guys know how much I like using tissue paper. And I'm always saying just get it from the dollar store. And I do that all the time. But also I'm working on some pieces that I'm putting in my fine art and some of my other collage. So I decided to order the archival acid-free tissue paper. And this is... Uh, it's lingen free um, and it's also buffered so this is the kind of stuff if you want to you know anything that you want to store long term um, and you don't want it to yellow or you know for any of the acids to seep into what you're storing it can be fabrics it can be art it can be a lot of things this is the type of tissue paper you would get now I got this on Amazon and it was like only nine nine dollars and I want to say there's like 50 sheets or something in this it's quite a bit in here. You see, it's a big pack. So I thought I would get this because I'm working on, like I said, some projects where I want it to be acid free. And so I thought I would share it with you because I know a lot of times I get questions about things being archival and what have you. And, and it's, it's not that much to buy it. So um, <clears throat> I thought I would share that with you and I'll leave the link for this below so if you want to grab some um you'll know what it is you can you know just get it off of amazon if you want also i'll leave the link for some of her books so you don't have to remember that and also sabrina ward is now on instagram i think she's been on there for about a year year and a half now and she does a lot of sort of free hangouts and stuff like that um as well as she has some paid versions of her courses around writing and doing the written journal 
so I'll leave a link for her down there as well so that um, you guys can check her out on Instagram for those of you who are on Instagram. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over here. <clears throat> so the first thing I wanted to do was to take some tissue paper and let's just stamp it. You know how much we love using tissue paper. And what's nice about doing this is that if you stamp it, then you know you can get all the different kind of words down. And then we're gonna do a process, uh, we're gonna do some burrow. <laughs> we're gonna do a process of putting some of the words down, some of the written hand, and just kind of go back and forth between them and see what we um what we end up with. And this is a I love, I love, love, love. Um working like this because it's very freeing um you don't have to focus so much on your handwriting um and you can really kind of you know do something pretty creative with it i believe early on um like last year sometime i did videos on how i made these cards and I use Seth's, and these are like journal prompt cards i like using these just to kind of you know they're fun to make and I use them making this pack here. And so, you know, you just kind of, kind of flip them. Let's say you've come into the studio and I use them like this too. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Like just some inspiration. And then, you know, you can just pull out a card. And then this one is mysterious. So you could use that word as a prompt for working like it gives you something to start thinking about okay mysterious and like what does that mean for you what comes up for you you know like you can even use the artwork that's on the card to start with maybe as a as a jump off of the color palette or some of the shapes that you see but these are fun to make and i have a video where i made them so you can check that out but i used for these cards i used this pack and this is journal jargon eight i'll make sure i put some links for these below. Um, so today I pulled some, some out of journal jargon nine because I like the words, um, scribbler survivor. I think that's good for what we've been going through this past year. So we'll, you will use some of these. Also, he has a pack of just large letters and these are fun to use just to kind of start off. Um, words and stuff that we can use. So I'm a, we're going to use this one too. And then I like this word believe. I like how he has it. And it's like, like all this scribbly scripty stuff. And you guys know I like that. So to use this works for me because I can um, work it back into my own scripting and stuff. And um, this is, so I'll put them down, the links down. And then this I love because um, you can actually make your own kind of labels and stuff with this. Yes. I like this one. Um, and then he has some mail art ones and I love this one. This is the one I used on the back of here. Storyteller. So I made this deck is my storyteller deck and with art mythos and me telling stories village visually and everything that just so appealed to my own, um, art mythos, but it's promise memories, hope. These are good ones to um to focus around and and then the last one oh there's two here um you can see fragile handle with care these may be some that you'd be interested in um unity they're all really neat and then he always has patterns and other things that go with them so they're not just words you get words plus other things to work with so i'm going to work with today i decided i'm going to work we're going to work with this one just because we have to. I'm going and, and he does a lot of circles and stuff. And, you know, of course, I love circles. So this works for me. So I'm going to get this believe. That believe is just calling my name. And his stamps and stuff are not expensive. And Seth is really, really cool. If it turns out that anything you want is... Um, this is not in stock at that time. Just reach out to him, call him or email him. He'll put you on a wait list and he will definitely call you when they come in. He's such a, an approachable person. I really love Seth. He's a good, really wonderful artist. You know, I'm going to leave it on here like this because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with this one. And so then these, I've already pulled a couple out. 
so we'll get started okay so the idea here is to get some stamp pads so i have a black one i have the distress oxide and the black soot and then i also just got the gathered twigs just as um, to play with that so this one since it's already on a backing I'm just going to stamp the whole thing up since we're putting it down on our um, our um, paper I love working with stamps like this because for me it allows me to be able to um, um, and it's stamped up good it allows me just maybe just to have a stamping session and get a lot of things that I like stamped and if you put them down here on your paper then you have these um, ready so all you have to do is pull from your little stash of uh, stamped papers especially when you're collaging or you're working in your journal or you're traveling and you want to have stuff with you I definitely do this for when I'm traveling and then you have all this stuff you don't have to take a lot of extra material or stamp pads and stuff like that if you don't want them just get making sure I get a good amount of ink on here I say this looks pretty good I'm going to take this and just flip it over, put that down. And then, of course, you can take these. I mean, you could separate them and make words with them and stuff, too. <clears throat> but I have a tendency to like to have the words, you know, like individual letters. So this is a good way of, yay, see, having them right there. So that's a nice print there. So we have these ready to go. Wow, oh, look at that. And I like how he scripted and scribbled back into them. I mean, that, that's just my style of, of rubber stamps. So we have that one. Let's do Believe. Do it here so I don't get a lot of stuff on the, on the paper that we're using. So we're gonna stamp these up, let them set them to the side so they can, you know. Oh, look at that! It just looks so good. Um, let me just. If you have the back, they have backings on. Them. They're the self-sticking ones, you know. So. I'm just going to put them on my little block here. This one says storyteller. I want this one too. Okay. So we'll get these on there. Just good to leave a certain amount of space in between them. There's Ad, Aston. Who knows what he's barking at, but somebody in the house will get him. So, okay, so we have Scribbler, Survivor. See, I, I love this old typewriter text. I, I really like um, Seth's aesthetic. I, and I, you know, I'm not big on a lot of <clears throat> rubber stamps and stuff like that. And, you know, you know, I, I really have a a culture of us creating our, our own things and not just relying on stuff that you can just that's pre-done but I'm big on when I recognize somebody's aesthetic that I like why reinvent the wheel so like it wouldn't make sense for me to I mean I like this aesthetic it's no need for me to kind of reinvent the wheel around the, these type of stamps I have some stamps of my scripting and some of my other patterns that I'm working on now to get out but um oh see that I turn these into little um did I put one in the book here just get ready guys stop the video go get yourself something I have my tea here this morning <laughs> you know just 
think this is going to be a long one. But I thought, what, did I put it in here? Where I made one of those as a, um, as a stamp. And I thought I used it in this journal. I might have used it in a different journal. But it makes the coolest, like, um, label. Okay, I'm not going to waste time trying to find it. But it makes neat, like, labels like this. So you kind of make your own labels with it. Okay, so I want to get, so these are all the ones I want to use, but let me get some gathered twigs. Let's just get, um, let me just clean this one off a little bit. Let's just get some gathered twig just to be able to have some words or something that we can having a different color of um, ink. And I like this gathered twigs. This is kind of like a, a red brown or something. See, I like that. And I'm going to do believe also. Okay. And then we'll put this to the side and then we're going to get our pages set up. So we can kind of have fun with this idea right there. This paper is really taking these inks nicely too. It's a little thicker than I would say the tissue you get from the dollar store, but I wouldn't say it's like that much thicker, but it is thicker. I'm just going to see if it's any more on here. I might just get a ghost and that's okay too. It's better that I can clean my thing off on here. Yeah, you got a light. Oh, that did good, though. How did I get it backwards? You guys see that? What did I do? Oh, I have it upside down. <laughs> Oh my God, advanced mathematics, Robin, advanced mathematics. Oh goodness. I'm like, what did I just do to get that? <laughs> okay. All right, thank you for indulging me, my friends. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is get this stuff to the side. And um, I'm going to get some paper, some blue paper here. And, okay, and also I'm going to pull out my um, Quaco. I like that ink pen. So we're going to be using the Signos as well. So let's put this to the side. We're going to let that dry. I love, love, love using these rubber stamps like this. So now we have our page. So let's go ahead. We're going to do some intuitive collaging. And we're basically going to collage um, some of the page like um how sabrina's you know work is we're using this as our inspiration so you can take any page really and so the idea of the inspiration work is to do some artwork have some writing around it i love how she took a photo here and just took the the white part of the photo and wrote in there so we're going to do um that's going to be some of our inspiration. So I'm just kind of giving you guys a little eyes on it again so you can sort of see. So let me get my, um, let me get my, I have my tray of all of, you know, my little off pieces and stuff that I use for intuitive collaging. And also this week, where are they? I used, I made, we did some mask making over in Patreon. And I do these because I like, it's a way of using up all your small pieces. And you guys have seen this, other people do this sort of mask making thing. But I like to make small collages of my bits and pieces, sort of in my style. So I have them. So when you wanna go and just, a lot of times you're traveling, these are great because you can just take these pieces with you. And then when you're collaging, you're in your travel journal, you can grab a piece, you might say, this will work well. You can actually take it, glue it down on the page, start writing around it. You know, you can build the page up with these kind of images. So I love, love, love this. So we did a lot of these 
this week. You can see they all have just different kind of painterly, like you literally could glue this down and then work around it, right? So let's see. I think I'm going to take one of these because at least that part is already, like maybe this, for what I have in mind. Let's see how that one works. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of paper like this that's just the you know the, the edges I tear off from my um, um, coffee and tea dyed papers. I think that one is done. Do I have I don't have to stop the video to go get no. So I'm just going to kind of get a background going. Now you could do this with paint. Um, I'm going to use more paper we are going to use a little bit of paint you'll see just so I can avoid you know dealing with the drying time so let's put this down here sort of gives us a background to our page and this is going to go down okay so now just kind of that's a good start I'm gonna get another piece let's just put another can even put that piece down. You can change up what you're doing, you know. <clears throat> We're just collaging. It's kind of like, it's what I call intuitive collage, but you know, it's just getting some stuff down. Okay. So. Okay, so that's kind of going to be, um, what we're doing there and this I'm going to just kind of have as a focal point now you could just actually do some quick collaging on the paper but I'm gonna use these because I'm showing you guys a lot at a time and it's no need to take time up with you know extra collaging so I'm just using some black acrylic paint um, and and I'm gonna use my card to smooth it on and what I like about doing it like this too is that it dries fast you know when you just smooth it on like this you really just get You'll see where I'm going with this. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. So you can use any black thing. I have the Arteza black here. That works well. Even this decor art, deco art, and the black. This is called black tie. They're all work well let me just get I like to just go ahead and <clears throat> kind of get any excess paint off like this this kind of helps you to dry your page down okay so so see this is ready to put on there see how good that looks <clears throat> Okay, so now what I'm going to do is let me go back and let's grab our words and see. Like, I definitely want to use this belief. So, I'm going to use my water brush. I always use the water brush to get, um, I don't have a lot of water left in here right now, but to actually tear it really works so well when you want to tear out from the tissue and you just want to wet it a bit and then just pull it away from itself you know just kind of pull it away and it'll just feather 
but it'll tear right where you want it. Okay. So I want that, and I'm also going to get, so see, I'm going to come over here and get Survivor and Scribbler from over here. So it allows you just to kind of pull out of your, you know, the center of your. And I'm going to get I'm going to get an R for my name for Robin. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. So. Okay. So. These are some of the basics we're going to work with. Let me just go ahead and clip this bit off. So, let's see what I'm going to do here. I can do a little bit more off. You know, once you kind of get it all in. So, I want to get rid of more of the white. Even though a lot of it's going to go trans, you know, you know, translucent, not transparent, but definitely translucent. It just gets a little. So let's just get, and you can go in as close to the, to the stamp as you want. Because this method really allows you almost a fussy tear. Okay, let's say this is pretty good. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of lay things out, sort of figure out what I'm going to do. So this R, I think I want to put this I need more water in my pen. that down there and sometimes what I do is I use the words as definitely as a jumping off point for what I'm going to write you know my ideas I'm using black because I want to use the white pen. I love the, the way the white ink looks on the black paint. Um, so this is just one style. Of course, you don't have to use the black paint. You can use any color paint and uh, any color pen or marker or whatever that you want to use. I'm just using, I'm using this one because I think, first of all, it's probably one that you might not think about right off to do it this way. So it kind of gives you an extra point of inspiration. And it's one of my faves. So, okay. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this somewhere like that. So this is all going to get glued down and then I'm able to write around it this way. So let's go ahead and get... I think that's a pretty good layout for what I'm thinking about. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this down. See how cool this is just to have it already <laughs> telling you. When you're looking at TV or hanging out with the family and they're doing some whatever and it's not, you know, you're not doing, necessarily doing that activity, but you kind of want to hang out or you're listening to a podcast or some music. This is the best thing to do is just making these all these collages. I do this periodically. And then I just have them in my stash and it's amazing how inspirational they are just in themselves to have them as a starting point. 
do it like this. And these colors work together really nicely. So I'm gonna put that there. Okay. Okay, so take this little stick. This is a Tomboy blue stick. So I need something thin, thinner that I can work with this. So, because be, by it being, you know, um, tissue paper, I don't really want to, you don't really want a strong glue that could rip it. And uh, one of my patrons sent me this because we're always talking about glues and we're always trying different glues so she sent me this stick to try oh my god <laughs> I put it on the wrong side how did you do that oh my god look at that we need to do another stamp okay let me just put this on something I'll just put it on here because nothing is wasted. At some point, I will be putting this down backwards on something. Okay. Well, I did have another one, so I have this one. Well, hey, it's going to be this color today. It's all good. At least it works. Can you believe that? The tissue paper just, um, that is like so insane. It's like the tissue paper just, I didn't realize I had flipped it on the wrong side because it's so transparent. Yeah. Well. At least you guys won't make that mistake. You'll double check because you'll remember I did it. <laughs> oh gosh, that is insane. That is so funny. Okay, let me just indulge me to get this little bit off again. Crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm still, can't believe I did that. Okay, so it's all good. Okay. Okay, that's going to be pretty. Okay, so. So I'll put this down too. So let me just go ahead and get this R. I want to put this at the bottom. Okay. And might even be better in this color because I did have that black up there, which I like. So maybe not as strong. Okay, so we want to flip it over on this side. Okay. I'm just talking about my glue. Okay. Didn't pay attention to how the thing was done. I want to get a good adhesion on here. I believe in being generous with glue. I don't like the little bit of do do do, and that's it. So I don't really like a lot of pockets and and um and uh, bubbles and stuff like that. So I 
Am I actually losing my mind? Didn't I just flip this over? Like, why is it reversing? <laughs> I cannot believe that. So you know what I'm going to do? What am I doing? It's like it's... That can't be the case. This is how it should... Oh, oh my goodness, Robin. That, pro that other one was probably was fine, too. Okay, I'm going to put this down there. Get it down. <laughs> Get it down quick. <laughs> oh, boy. Lord have mercy. So we're going to get these edges now. That's like one of those, those puzzles you see the maiden or the witch. You know, it's like my mind kept on flipping it. But I think I did get this one wrong, didn't I? It, there wouldn't have been a way to fix that. Oh, look. Isn't that funny? It was just upside down. <laughs> I know you guys are thinking. Well, um, she's not as brilliant as we thought. <laughs> oh, goodness. I cannot believe someone put scribbler. I kind of want that up there. Okay, so I think I am going to put that up there. Boy, I can't believe that my mind, I just kept on flipping that image. That's weird. Okay. Put this here. See how nicely it does work around <clears throat> all of them um, when you have like your collage together and put this down. It's all working nicely around. <clears throat> I'll hold it up so you can see it and put that to the side there. Now I'm using the glue, um, the, my glue stick because I want things to dry and I work around it, but I'd also would use. Um, matte medium to put this down because then I would get all the I get all these edges down nicely and when I'm done once everything dries I'll come back and put some matte medium down but I really I really like that so you see how we're really getting this nice collage type of thing and then using my pen <clears throat> so I'm gonna start off with so the way I kind of even write in my journals is make sure I get this going is um Find something dark here. Okay. The way I even get started in my journal is like I might start with a word. So we have here scribbler. And I, I really like that word scribbler because, you know, it just allows us to, to think outside the box. We can be a little messy. We can scribble. We don't have to have this refined thing. So scribbler. Um, so I'd start here like this. Wait a minute. Come on, pen. Why is it my pen? Let me just get a, a fresh one. That one should work fine, but I don't want to, because it's it's basically new. I haven't used it a lot. Um, let me just put this to the side. Okay, there we are. So I'd say. So you see this pen is just so nice and on that black paint. So I said, you know, scribbler, this reminds me to have fun, not um, take things too seriously, stay in the flow. So you see how you can just have a word like this and it allows you to just kind of move through the document. So like, you know, you know, so believe, so, you know, believing in my joy of art 
is at the center of my exploration and creative time. Um, so see how I kind of start off with the word scribbler because that sort of like hit me and then you just kind of like you just let the word just let it flow like don't overthink it just you know like it just will come and then so sort of believing in my in my joy you know of um, of art and creation is at the center of my exploration and creative time so um, now I have this word survivor and so I'm gonna put this in here because for me I wonder if I can I'm kind of put it right there. So let's go ahead and get this one in. Because for me, surviving was all about um that's what you know got me through 20. 20 so um creating um being connected let's get this out of the way to community helped me to survive <laughs> 2020 having my patrons and YouTube creators to exchange with was just what helped me to flourish and thrive. You see, look how that looks good. That page ain't bad. And so here I had the Robin, the R for Robin. So I'm just going to kind of put um, and um, today's date is today is actually the 15th. I think I'm taping this. So this is um, Four, fifteen, twenty, twenty-one. So, see how easy that is to just create a page. <clears throat> so, and I just like this black paint with the white because it just has such a chalkboard look, and it's like so graphic. It's like so graphic, you know. Um, and at the same time, it really has this sense of being able to create and write around your work. Now, let me just do this. I'm going to get these edges down. They're going to drive me crazy. I'll use a little bit of this glue. So, yeah, I hope that that has been inspirational <laughs> and that, um, you know, if you've had this challenge before of like one, I know this comes up for a lot of people in my community and when I do workshops and stuff, people want to add text and stuff, but they're like, you know, I don't like my handwriting or I never really know what to say. And if and it's true, because if you're visually oriented, sometimes, you know, figuring out what to say is like, ugh. So, but if you use these words as prompts, and I think that sets sets are so beautiful, like in a in our kind of way, not like over the top. Really, like you know, you have a typewriter text. You know, you this this is just neat. But at the same time, it's not, you know, it's not too much. I'm trying to see where my um, because I could actually script on, do some of my um scripting on here. But anyhow, that's good because I don't want to make the video too long, as I already knew it was going to be. I think we're coming up on. 40, almost 50 minutes or so. So anyway, that gives you an idea of um, how I'm going to be working this week. And I invite you to do the same and just sort of fill our 
journal up with thoughts and feelings and just use it as a place to release. And, and you know, it's funny because I got this that butterfly. I had this in my stash. That could be neat on this page. I might end up doing a collage with this over here. I don't know. We'll see. Just I just saw it sitting there, you know. I'm off thinking about something else. Um, so, yeah, just kind of think about some of these techniques. Don't forget to just hang out and, um, oh, let me just show you this one. Of course, done could never be done for me. But let me, while we, since I showed you this one, let me just, let's go ahead and put a little label. I could have. So I'm just tearing out one of these little, see when you separate them, when I saw these stamps on his, in his shop, I immediately thought, when I saw this particular one, I immediately thought, oh goodness, this one, I could really use to um, make labels. So let's just... Figure out where we want to put it. I could put it down there. Like that. So let's go ahead and glue that down. And then, you know, you could turn it into any kind of label. Put anything in there you want. From date to... Oh, I like that. And I like the way um, the painted edge comes through. And so I'm going to just take my pen and I'm just going to write the word joy. Because to me, that was what came out most for me in this whole writing and what have you. Is that, you know, this idea of just having this continued connection to joy and my art. So those little things make the neatest like labels that I think work in kind of with our style of scribbly and, you know, sort of grunge. Alrighty, I knew it was something else I had wanted to show you. Okay, so there we are. There's a page done. And um, have fun this week. If you're new to my channel, please um, hit that subscribe bell and, you know, um, hit the all so that you get all the notifications. If you like the video, please thumb it up. And if you are new at the bottom, when you go into the description of this video, you'll see the very first video um, that we that describes the whole project. And then this is also a part of a playlist. So if you hit the playlist under, like, you know, when you go to my channel and you see videos, playlist, hit the playlist, it'll start at the beginning. So that's how you can find all the videos because I do playlist them. And I guess that's everything. Love you guys. Have a great week. Don't forget to think about burrow when you're working. And this is really all kind of collaged together and pieced together. You can actually put some sewing in your pieces. Um, think about making some of these mass made things. Just grab your little tray of all kinds of things here and um, have at it. And what else? Yep, I'll have all the links for the different things that I use. So if you guys wanna try some of the same stuff, you can get it. That's everything, love you so much. Take care, have a really great week, and I will see you again next week um, for week 17. All right, take care. Love you guys. Bye-bye.